Welcome to another open conversation about what is happening in anti-Semitism in the world. Uh, we want to talk about it to see where it's coming from and what can we do about it. Uh, I'm happy to welcome today Professor Leonard Sachs. He's a social psychologist at Brandeis University. He's the director of the university's Center for Modern Jewish Studies. Uh, he's done a lot of research with focus on American Jews, mm -hmm. American Jewish community, and also the relationships between the diaspora and Israel, and a lot more. And with me also is Dr. Michael Lightman. Uh, he is a global authority on the authentic wisdom of Kabbalah. He's published over 40 books that were translated into dozens of languages. And in recent years, he's very focused in lecturing and writing extensively on the root cause and solution to anti-Semitism, according to Kabbalah. So, Gentlemen, um, I'd like to start straight with, uh, with the issue at hand. Uh, you know, Tel Aviv University published a global analysis of the state of anti-Semitism for 2018. And uh, at least from their report, it doesn't look good. Uh, they're talking about a rise in almost all forms of anti-Semitism. They're saying that it's becoming normalized in many public spaces, that surveys today show that Jews have a growing sense of insecurity. In some countries, they actually report feeling no longer an integral part of that society. And of course, there's a rise of 13% in major violent anti-Semitic incidents, uh, one of which, of course, was the Pittsburgh event. Now, I'd like to start with you, Professor Sachs. You, uh, uh, following the Pittsburgh event, you've written that the same anti-Semitism that we thought had been long gone, uh, is actually showing itself, you said, like a virus that mutates and simply assumes new forms in our time. So if you can explain what you meant, what do you mean by uh, anti-Semitism being a virus and uh, where is it coming from? So on the whole, Bertolt de Breed, in the United States, anti-Semitism hasn't changed very much, that the general population um, is not anti-Semitic, but just the opposite. Uh, it's interesting, in America, uh, in the United States, uh, Jews are the most positively viewed religious group, which is quite extraordinary given that Jews are two to two and a half percent of the, uh, of the American population. But what's happened is that anti-Semitism seems to have been latent and has um, appeared in a number of violent in, uh, incidents. Uh, Pittsburgh last October 27th was the most uh, horrific, uh, where 11 people uh, were uh, were murdered in a in a synagogue. A more recent incident in California. Uh, but those are those are aberrations. Those aren't um, the normal. And what what I was writing about after Pittsburgh is that the the general environment in in the United States is one where minorities are denigrated, um, where immigrants are are seen as as hurting the country, not helping uh, the country, where open statements of hatred um, are made and even accepted by political political leaders. Um, and that's a very frightening situation. It's a very frightening situation for, um, mm -hmm. for everyone. And I'll just end by saying that as th these incidents, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Poway, California, horrific, uh, there's, there's no question. But they come in the context of um, mass shootings at churches, mass shootings at schools, um, mass shootings in bars and, and other places. So, uh, and I don't think um, that we as, as Jews can, if you will, separate ourselves from this, this larger, uh, I call it sometimes a Petri dish, uh, where um, hatred um, is allowed to express itself and allowed to express itself um, in violent forms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, would you say that anti-Semitism grows together with hatred of other groups? I would say that the that anti-Semitic tropes, which have been around, get expressed in an environment where violence and hate speech and so on is allowed to is allowed to exist, um, and the. You know, chaval. The, the the shame of it is that um, a few people can do 
extraordinary damage. I think what is, is particularly problematic, pernicious at the moment, is that each incident then stimulates other incidents, if you will. It gives people ideas. It reminds people um, of anti-Semitic hatred. And uh, we need to worry about that. All right. Dr. Lightman, can you share your view on, on why do you think anti-Semitism keeps coming back or shows itself again and again? I think that anti-Semitism never disappeared. It is really going in parallel to the people of Israel, to the nation of Israel, since the time it was stabilized by Abraham in ancient Babylon, about 3,500 years ago, approximately. And since then and onwards, the hatred towards the people of Israel was constantly in parallel to that, to the group, according to the development of the nation, of the people of Israel. Especially after the destruction of the Second Temple, where already religions started forming, Christianity, then Islam, and they really felt themselves as contradicting, being in the opposition to Judaism. And that is why anti-Semitism has even was strengthened by these religions. But in truth, it's a stream that's going in parallel to the nation of Israel. And it always has been more or less, but it's constant. We see this from in all of our history, of our, of our people. There are better times or worse times, but it's, it's constant. It's always there. And I, when I came to the wisdom of Kabbalah, after I was w working in biocybernetics, so when I started getting to know the wisdom of Kabbalah, then I learned the reason of anti-Semitism, that the root of Judaism, it, at its root, is, lies the principle of love thy friend as thyself. What Abraham, when he started building this group, that this group that he was building will only engage in love of others, in connection between everyone, above human ego that exists in each and every one of us. And he wanted to build such a group. And people from all around Babylon came to him, to Abraham, and at the time, that was the civilization of the time. There were 70 nations of the world, that's what it's written. Well, there were small nations, small groups, but, but at the time, it, it started from there. And then, when Abraham came out of there, of Babylon, with his group, when he gathered them from all of the residents of Babylon, it's written, also in the Torah about this and in other sources, this group started moving towards the land of Canaan, Israel of today. And this group, because it connected above all the differences between the people, as it's written, love covers all transgressions, if we form this connection above all the differences, this group over time started becoming a nation, a single group. But really, it's not a nation. It is that same group that was formed from the 70 nations of the world. In other words, in us, in the people of Israel, there is one spiritual root, which is love thy friend as thyself. If we hold on to that root, but if we don't cling to that root, then we feel ourselves as separated. That's one. Two, we are unique by the fact that we carry within us a method of how to unite. Love covers all transgressions, love thy friend as thyself. That is the foundation of the, of the Jewish nation. Because Abraham, who is the father of the nation, he formed us that way, based on those principles. And because throughout history,
We are evolving more and more. All of humanity is actually evolving. It's gradually reaching a state that it's becoming more integrative, more mutually dependent. In, in all the world, we see today that the whole world, as it's called, a global village. And then we're reaching a point that it's becoming very important for us to start uniting in all of the nations of the world. Why? Because our ego is growing from generation to generation. And while the ego starts growing, this leads us to a danger of general annihilation, general destruction. And that is why there is a claim from all of the nations of the world towards the nation of Israel that it seems to them that the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, is disturbing them, that it's ruining humanity, that it's not doing what it should be doing, that it must bring the whole world. They don't know it exactly, they can't pinpoint it, but they feel there's something here, because this phenomena is, you could say, supernatural, this hatred towards Israel. So they have this claim towards Israel, and at the foundation of that lies the fact that Israel needs to show the world the method of correction. Because without that, it's clear that humanity is deteriorating until we'll reach this mutual destruction among everyone. That is why, in our times, it is again becoming very important because we are again under the threat of wars or troubles, either on the economic level or on wars. That is why when such tensions arise in humanity, then again anti-Semitism is on the rise. And it's interesting that this rise of anti-Semitism it comes from nations that were never in contact with Israel, with the Jewish nation, North, South Korea, such, such nations. What relation do they have to the Jewish people? None. But even in those places, anti-Semitism is rising. It's rising on an internal, instinctive level, because they too feel from the aspect of human nature that Israel, that the Jewish people are hiding something from them, that the Jewish people ho are holding the key to the good life, but they're not passing it on to the entire world. And also in the state of Israel, there's a problem with the Jewish people here that there's, it's felt in the world Sorry, the Jewish people themselves in Israel have a sense of responsibility. They feel that. They don't know why, though. And the wisdom of Kabbalah explains it. It explains why. But who knows the wisdom of Kabbalah? The wisdom of Kabbalah isn't mainstream, open to everyone. And that's a problem. And in addition to that, because we, the Jews, are a result of the 70 nations of the world from the time of Babylon on the one hand, and on the other hand, we started connecting through Abraham to a connection between us above all differences. So we have these two roots in parallel. We have a spiritual root and a corporeal root. The spiritual root is love of others, and the corporeal root is from the 70 nations of the world. So if we, the, the Jews, don't cling on to that state of connection, of mutual love, then we fall to the roots of the 70 nations of the world. And then we don't all feel that we belong to a single nation. And then through anti-Semitism, we're beginning to realize that we should be together. And without anti-Semitism, we're willing to right, disperse. There's, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot that was said right now. <laughs> I, I apologize. Uh, I, I couldn't make it shorter. You wanna wanna jump in? And you know, it, 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 the situation you described doesn't doesn't fit what's going on in, in America. Uh, in America, uh, one of the groups uh, that is most supportive, both of Israel and of Jews, are evangelical Christians. Um, unequivocally, um, their love of uh, of 
Eretz Yisrael, of Medinat Yisrael, is, is really quite, uh, quite extraordinary. Um, at the same time, uh, Jews have been successful uh, beyond—I don't think anybody in Jewish history could have imagined um, having a non-Jewish state where um, Jews are um, in leading positions in government, in business, in the academy, etc. Um, so there isn't anti-Semitism. I think the problem with what does it mean to love thy neighbor, what is, what is achavat mean is is a little problematic because love is particularistic. If you love everybody, you don't love anybody. Uh, and um, uh, I think um, Jews um, historically um, have been rejected, anti-Semitism has been stimulated um, beca because Judaism is particularistic. There are certain responsibilities that Jews have um, that others um, don't have. Now, out of that should come um, love of others. If you're secure in who you are, if you love yourself, if you love your family, if you feel that sense of connection, you can be part of, of, of something larger. Uh, one of the things I do is just to give it, make this concrete is I study Taglit Birthright Israel. I've been studying um, mm. that's now um, 700,000 young people who've come over the last 20 years to Israel. And a key part of the program is Mifgash with Israeli peers. Um, and um, one of the interesting things, um, and most of the peers, because of the ages of the diaspora uh, youth who come from overseas, is that they're chayalim. They're, they're doing their army service um, while, uh, while they meet. And what, what is one of the extraordinary outcomes is that the, the chayalim say that they come into being part of a birthright group feeling as Yisraelim, as feeling as Israeli, and they leave as feeling Yehudim. They feel part mm -hmm. of this thing that we call Klal Yisrael. Mm -hmm. And that feeling that you are not just an individual, that you are part of something bigger, is the key, I think, to, to Judaism, to Judaism's success. And while it has over time created problems with, with other groups, um, I don't see that happening um, in, in America. Um, we have fringe groups, we have fringe people, we have people, um, uh, most of whom have diagnosable mental disorders who end up um, engaging in, in violence. Um, and what I worry about is by focusing too much on these individuals, we're giving them a megaphone. We're giving them the ability uh, to, um, to spread their message, to spread their message of hatred, to spread messages of violence, and, uh, and then anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic acts become contagious. And that's my, that's my sense of the problem. So, according to Professor Sachs' opinion, there isn't yet such a problem with the Jews in America that requires being dealing with. You're an expert in American Jewish community. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you say that American Jews today feel threatened by a rise in anti-Semitism or not? I, I, think, I think some people uh, feel threatened. Uh, but people feel threatened by lots of things. Um, mm -hmm. and I walk into to shul, um, and you can't not think about um, the threat of violence. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thinks of the threat of violence in lots of places, not only um, in a shul, mm -hmm. and it's not only a problem of of anti-Semitism. So, so it's, you're saying it's worthwhile for us, in the meantime, for the time being, to not raise this topic to headlines, because that will lead to more anti-Semitism than if we just keep silent. I'm saying it's a difficult problem. You know, there's several weeks ago in America, there was a, it wasn't an anti-Semitic act, 
It was a disgruntled worker at a uh, at a uh, Iriad, a city hall, mm -hmm. um, who killed a dozen a dozen people. And afterwards, the, the the police and the authorities did something very interesting. They held a they held a press conference, and they said, "We are going to say the name of the person." who killed these dozen people once, and then we're not talking about this individual again. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it struck me because how we talk about these incidents, not to deny them, uh, they, they, they happen, they're important for people to know about it, they're important for people to be aware, but the way that we treat them may determine whether these incidents stimulate, cause, beget other other incidents, and I'm just saying we have to be we have to be very careful, and we have to be very careful not to assume that one person um, taking anger, frustration um, out um, represents represents everything, because mm -hmm. again, um, survey after survey shows that. American Jews are, Judaism is a um, highly respected, favored um, religion. Jews are admired for their, um, for their smartness, for their accomplishments, uh, etc. And we can't let that go unsaid, even as we pay attention to, uh, to the dangers. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, so move on. That's clear. Uh, I, I, I want to try to connect these things. You seem to be saying, Dr. Lightman, that anti-Semitism is, is something that is almost integrated into the structure of humanity. That it, it's not something and that we see that is that it's been accompanying us for thousands of years. Anti-Semitism. On the one hand. On the other hand, we need to say that it's in accordance to different periods of time. Say after the Holocaust, there was a relatively calm time. Now it's beginning to rise again. It's possible that we, we, what we need to do is understand the reasons for it also throughout history and also now if humanity is in a good state, then they leave the Jewish people alone. If they start suffering, then they start pressuring the Jews. Now, we're coming closer to a crisis, ecological, economical, social, both in Europe, in the, in the common markets there, also in the United States, the tensions are rising. And during these times, of course, anti-Semitism rises. What is the correlation? What's the connection between that? You could say that because the people aren't happy, so as usual, they're... They're, you know, releasing their negativity towards the Jews. Because it's always, even if it's felt or even if it isn't felt, there is a, a certain negative opinion from the nations of the world about the Jews. Nothing you can do. We see that throughout statistics and all of the research all around the world. You, you can ask all the Jews that live but around you know, the world. I want to relate to what Professor Sachs said. There's also a very positive uh, attitude towards Jews. Jews are, are, are uh, considered no, very unique, no, very no, smart, no, smart, no, very smart. In comparison to what's happening with the Jews in America, of course, they've achieved they have very good achievements there, social status and, and national status, and very, very special. And this was never before in history. That many relate to Jews as highly intelligent and, and uh, being able to accomplish a lot of things and contributing a lot to the development of, of mankind. Do you see that as well? Look, I see this from a few different perspectives. First of all, let's look at the uh, e economic world and scientific as well, you know, the academies, etc. Wherever the Jews are in power positions, uh, science and economy. And there's also, of course, culture as well, but that's something more specific. So you can't compare the contribution of Jews in those fields to, to other people in those fields. Of course, America wouldn't be America if 
like the founder of Google, the founder of Facebook, etc., etc. It's clear. In Russia, it's the same. In France, it's the same. I spoke to the French minister, it was many years ago, that's when different riots started with Jews in France, and he said, he was French, he wasn't Jewish, he said, we're only praying for the, for the Jews not to leave France, because if a thousand families, Jewish families, the strong families there, if they leave France, you can shut down the country. No, well, he was exaggerating, but it, it shows that they're aware that this is a positive force. So, okay, okay. So, on the one hand, you say that uh, uh, there is this constant sentiment, negative sentiment towards Jews, but also there is a very strong positive opinion toward, towards Jews. So, how does it how does it coincide? How, do, how does it work together? It's, one isn't related to the other. I'm, I'm from Russia. I was born and grew up there. I lived there until I was 28. When I was 28, I went to, to Israel. I came to Israel. So what can I tell you? And I was working in the, the scientific field. I was... Uh, advancing towards different um, titles in science. And I know that in all the places, the important, the key places in science, there were Jews. And if we take every single country in these countries, Jews have had a great contribution and every government is interested for this to continue on, quietly. Let's say in the formation of the atomic bomb, uh, spaceships. I, I know these people. It's mainly. Is there a connection Jews. between the 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 way you see it between the negative sentiment towards Jews and the positive sentiment towards Jews? Look, I still claim. I'm not a psychologist like uh, our guest, Professor Sachs, but I claim that each and every one from the nations of the world has a feeling inside that Jews are something special. I've traveled and have been around, I was in contact with my students from all around the world. And no matter where I meet people all around the world from all different nations, they all see the Jewish nation as something special. It's always this, there's like a, a dot in humanity that's unclear in, in the Jewish people. And we can't solve this until we explain what we actually need. And what we need is to bring the method of correction to the world, which is really required in today's global world. So I, don't, I, I wish it would be like our guest is saying, but I think Professor Sachs is still that doesn't yet feel what the wisdom of Kabbalah is saying. Because the wisdom of Kabbalah explains that anti-Semitism will rise and that the people of Israel, the Jewish nation, that is, they won't be able to, to escape it. And we will have to connect to a state, to, to, to such a, a state that the Torah requires from us. Love thy friend as thyself. When you say Torah, you mean this in the religious sense? No, 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 I'm not talking about the religious sense. No, not at all. It's not related to religion. A religion is something addition, in addition to that. That belongs to our, our regular daily lives. But you know, it, it seems to be that to, to the extent that we see ourselves as victims, to the extent that we see anti-Semitism as inevitable and that non-Jews are going to hate us and that we have to, to do something to block that, to prevent it, I think that makes it more difficult for us to, to love the other, to, to, to feel ourselves a part of, of the world. Um, you know, in some ways, um, we, we need to 
to, to think of ourselves, even as we think of, our, as, as our, of ourselves as having special responsibility, um, whether we call it tikkun olam, whether we call it something, something else, um, and not just to see ourselves as, as victims, because the more we talk about ourselves as simply um, the inevitable objects of, of virulent, violent uh, anti-Semitism, I think the more difficult it is going to be for Jews to fulfill their potential, um, their spiritual poten uh, potential, um, as well as their potential to um, create for society, from a scientific, from a cultural, from other intellectual um, perspectives, um, a, better, a better world for, for everybody. Um, and I, I think most importantly, we need to find a way to stop the current violence and uh, the, these horrific incidents that's, that have occurred, whether it be to breathe, whether it be in Europe, um, the hatred of the Muslim world toward Israel, we need to find a way to, to, to stop these things, but I'm not sure that seeing ourselves as, as the inevitable victims of, of anti-Semitism, I'll call it, a it's not a psychologically healthy uh, um, response. You, you, do, you do think that the Jewish people has a certain potential that it needs to fulfill in the world? Yes, I think being to be a Jew is to feel a sense of responsibility, not just for yourself, mm -hmm. but for other people. That um, our relationships with other people, our commitment to knowledge and learning and passing it on and, and sharing our resources, uh, et cetera, um, I think that's, that's part of the value system. Um, I don't frame it as Kabbalah, but it's part of the, the value system of the Jewish people that's, passed, that's been passed down and been mm -hmm. part of, of the discourse amongst the Jewish people for 3,500 years. All right, so let's put the focus on, on this for a second. Dr. Lightman, if you can define, according to your view, what is exactly that Jewish potential or that role or that responsibility, what exactly do you feel that the Jewish people needs to provide to the world? I see that as much as we give to the world, science, wisdom, culture, in music, in, in everything, anything you can imagine, the world doesn't even consider it to be good. You can shout to everyone, why don't you appreciate us for everything we've given, Einstein's, etc. Look what we've done in the world. We can give you a list of everything we've, br we've brought to the world more than any other nation, but no one from the nations of the world doesn't appreciate it. And they're right. They're right. Because they expect only one thing from us, subconsciously, only connection, the method of connection that we have in us from the time that we were connected by Abraham, this method of connection is required, is needed by the nations of the world. And that is why it is formulated and translated into hatred towards the Jewish people. And show them our successes and show them what we've achieved and what we've done. They are not expecting this from us. Not, econ econ not finances, education, culture. They don't want that from us. They don't want it. They don't even take that into consideration. They don't count, they don't con consider, appreciate what you're bringing to the world. You're not giving one thing. If the nations of, of the world won't start uniting, they'll reach annihilation. So they're blaming you for the annihilation of the world, for the destruction of the world, not Hitler, because you're not bringing connection to the world, and the key to connection is in your hands. Um, you may have said hands. in the beginning, but if you can define, what is that connection that exists specifically in the Jewish people? Why doesn't it exist in other people? What, what, why specifically in the people? 
because all of the nations, every single nation developed from a single family, from a family, mother, father, children, then wider and wider into a clan, etc. And that's how they developed, that's how they evolved. However, the Jewish people, they didn't come from, from a pair of parents, but from all of the small nations in ancient Babylon, through Abraham, they, whoever wanted to unite came to Abraham. There was a, a crisis there in Babylon, and Abraham, he reached out and he, he called out to the people, whoever wants to learn and reach a state of connection, and those people came to him. He was, he was a known priest in Babylon. Therefore, the Jewish people aren't a biological nation like the rest of the nations. It's a group that was brought together through this flag of love thy friend as thyself. That is why, until this very day, this, this nation is something that's unclear to anyone. It's even been said that these, the Jews come from outer space because it's something that's, that's very conspicuous. It's very clear that it's something different. And of course, we would want to mingle around, disperse among the nations and among everyone, but it's not working and it, it won't work. Even, in, even if in America you have... Uh, the assimilation is about 70%, it won't help. There was a, a leap, and we will see it in a few years, how this process, it will go the other way. Actually, in America, it's not the case that 70% uh, of uh, the people are, are assimilating. Um, and in fact, uh, the Jewish population of America is growing uh, right now, and it's growing at very substantial uh, rates. And even the participation, not even, but participation in religious Judaism, um, Chinook and Jewish education um, is at, at unprecedented levels. Um, the connection of American Jews um, the arts is is at unprecedented levels. You know, in the space of a generation, we went from relatively few American Jews ever be stepping foot in this country, in this land, um, to a situation where at least half of adult Jews um, have visited uh, have visited Israel. Um, we now have a population. Our estimates are about seven and a half million. Um, Jews, it's growing at basically the rate of the of the general of the general population, um, and I think there is there's newfound interest in not just being an individual, not just being you know defined by how much money you earn and how big a car you have and how large your house is, but um, a more spiritual sense of being part of, uh, of a community. Um, and you know, basically around the world, our estimates are that we've returned to the, the Jewish population that existed in 1938. And it's a very different situation in, uh, today um, than it was on the, the eve of the Shoah. Um, so it's not that I'm Pollyannish or I'm overly optim optimistic, um, but I see Jews as being successful and I see the society in general as welcoming the contribution that Jews make and not preventing them from being, um, being part of this process. Um, I also see Israel, this tiny country um, in, in a tiny piece of, uh, of the, the Middle East um, having outsized uh, impact on the entire on the entire world and I think for the vast majority of people not for everybody but for the vast majority of people that's recognized as a very very positive uh, positive development um, and you know I want to keep coming back to it which is not to 
um, ignore not to mm -hmm. be concerned and worry about um, those who simply hate Jews, hate what we stand for, hate our success, what have you, who have anti-Semitic um, attitudes. But it's, it's, it's such a small group of people, at least in North America, um, that we need to keep it in perspective. All right. Uh, let's talk about the. And because of Mitrashem, still I'm, 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 I'm feeling this optimism. Would, are you not optimistic? No, I'm not American. I'm not American. I come to the United States once or maybe twice a year to our conventions, which we have with our students, and I'm not involved with the American people not the American public. But the fact that an intelligent, educated Jew, a professor, who's with experience, he has this perception, which is balanced, I would say. It's uh, inspiring, it's encouraging. Professor Sachs, you've, you've written that uh, the larger task uh, that we have at hand in, in America is to create a culture that values our differences but recognizes our responsibility for care, caring for one another. Right. Would you say that, that the disunity among Jews themselves has to do with making us more vulnerable to, to, to anti-Semitic events, attitudes? Yes, we are a disputatious people. We are, a, um, I mean, we are Israel. We are people who struggle. And so we have different views of all sorts of, all sorts of things. And yes, um, those of us in the Jewish community, I think one of the first love thy neighbor strategies, uh, to take Dr. Lightman's term, um, is to, um, to see ourselves as um, connected to other um, other Jews, even though they may look differently than we do, they may speak differently than, than we do, they may have different religious practices. Or, or the political divide, which is or the political, huge in America. Or the political divide. You know, it's interesting. Um, Stissel, the, the television program here, um, was uh, began broadcasting last year um, in the United States um, on Netflix yeah. and um, gained what for me was it was it was an extraordinary phenomenon um, and when the uh, the actors who've come to the United States who visited New York and Los Angeles um, you know people were paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for tickets to be able to see them and they were portraying people who, for many Jews, is a, a very different and, you know, unrelatable um, form of, uh, of Judaism, on the one hand, speaking a language, speaking languages, Yiddish and Hebrew, that, that, that most didn't, uh, didn't understand. Yet, I think what, what many people came to see, and I'm using a television series as a metaphor for the, the underlying issue is what they came to see is that these were human beings and that, you know, they may be doing things and living lives or the, 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 the characters that they played were living a life that wasn't their life, but you could immediately see that they were struggling with the same kinds of human problems of love and family relationships and career and all sorts of things that are universal <coughs> problems. And um, so, yes, uh, to go back to your question, uh, <coughs> as Jews, we need to work harder to see and be able to communicate with other people. Maybe that's one of the ways we practice um, working with, with, other, with other folks. But sometimes, by the way, what it means working with other folks is appreciating their struggle. In America, one of the, the issues is for American Jews to appreciate 
um, the struggle of African Americans um, who've been targets of, of, <laughs> of violence um, and and all sorts of all, all sorts of things. So my answer to your question is yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Dr. Lightman. Same question to you. Do you think disunity or, or feuds among Jews uh, somehow make us more vulnerable to the growth to anti-Semitism? There's no doubt that if the Jews are in a state of separation, like every nation, then their strength becomes weakened. That's, that's clear and that's definite. The problem is that the Jews don't have an easy time of connecting between each other. We know how our nation is separated. Is In Israel you have 42 political parties, I think. Then now we're, we're heading towards elections. We can see that's how it is in every place with, with Jews, every community, every city, every synagogue. That we, there's definitely a lot of work here for us. And if we will be able to also forgive, understand and come closer to one another, then of course that will help. So, okay, so maybe uh, to kind of conclude our, our conversation, I'd like to hear uh, a message. Uh, what's your message, your main message for the Jewish people uh, in this day and age? You go first, Professor Zaks. That's a lot of responsibility, a message for the Jewish people. Um, I think we need to um, think about our relationship with one another, um, and we need to, um, to understand better, learn more about the value system that our tradition, um, uh, our tradition gives us. Um, we shouldn't ignore anti-Semitism and the fact that some people um, hate us. Um, and are, are violent, um, but we should be very proud of, uh, of who we are and what we represent. Dr. Whiteman, message to the Jewish people. I agree with what Professor Sachs said, but uh, alongside with that, I think that we must add to our education that we have to be connected. It's written to be as one man in one heart. Love thy neighbor, love of others, to be in mutual responsibility for one another, all these writings in the authentic sources. It's not just words. It is a necessity for our nation, otherwise it won't remain a nation. It will be dispersed, it will be weakened, and in such a way we will definitely not be able to reach our full potential. So I would add that these edu social education for the Jewish people is what we need. We need to develop within the general Jewish people all over, over the world an educational system that brings us together, that connects us as a single nation, that teaches Jews all around the world how to properly be connected among one another, even though we're dispersed, but we are still a single nation. There is something that connects us, and that is what we're lacking. Then, if we have that, we will truly be able to be saved from any trouble and any problems. So hopefully we'll succeed in that. A lot, there's a lot of insights to take away from this conversation. Uh, and thank you for an honest and in-depth one. Uh, it was great. Uh, thanks to our viewers as well. And um, all the best.